Hello, my name is Rocco Strangio, and I'm the host of the Law, AI, and Money podcast. I bring on attorneys, engineers, and entrepreneurs to unravel the world of AI and to discuss it'll affect the legal profession. Today, I'm joined by Sohil and Sayan Bhatia, two brothers, engineers, and entrepreneurs who have started Kalinda AI. Kalinda leverages AI to vet mass tort claims for law firms. They can create reports, medical chronologies, and other tools in order for law firms to move forward with their cases. They can do all of this in a matter of minutes. For this episode, I had the privilege of traveling to San Francisco to talk with Sion and Sohil. In our conversation, we talked about how they rose up in the mass tort world, what made them create Kalinda AI, and some of the use cases for mass tort firms. We hope you enjoy our conversation. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Uh, before we get into our conversation, I just want to say thank you to being hospitable to me and in your source. Yeah. Um, obviously, we're here at the AAJ conference. Yeah. Uh, for those of our viewers that are not aware, the largest trial lawyer conference in the world, the lar- largest trial lawyer organization. So, um, I'm here with Zoheel, San. Uh, if you guys are not by to just introduce yourself yeah. to our conversation. Of course, yeah. Um, I'm Sion. I'm the co-founder of Kalinda. I'm um, so ill. I'm one of the co-founders of Kalinda as well. Yep. And, and how did you guys get into this world? I feel like it's a really niche space. There's not a lot of people who are in it. Yeah. Um, obviously, you're in San Francisco, in the epicenter of all of the tech that is being developed throughout the world. What made you guys transition? your background in tech into the world of mass tort so then law. Yeah. Um, we really just started, both of our backgrounds are in AI and tech. And we started with, you know, just looking out in the world and saying, how can we apply this technology in the context of the growth that AI was having? And we started with, you know, funny enough, restaurants and real estate. And we eventually, you know, started talking to personal injury lawyers, boom, you know, sort of advocated for solving a very painful problem that they were having which was just going through a lot of documents and records. Um, and so we, we actually started the personal energy space for a while. Um, and then just recently, about you know six months ago, sort of pivoted to the mass tort space uh, and been here ever since. So where'd you guys go to school? So we, San Francisco? We, so we actually grew up in Seattle. Yeah, so oh, we okay. were born in Denver, grew up in Seattle, went to school there. Um, and then, yeah, just another tech call. Oh yeah, another tech, I saw Microsoft all right. <laughs> yeah, everyone, everyone works at Microsoft. But, yeah. uh, and then you guys, what was your, what was your majors in, in college? Yeah, mine was computer engineering and AI as well. Yeah, I did computer engineering as well. Did you guys always know from a young age you guys are going to be? Oh, yeah. Of course. And then, yeah. Yeah. I, th- I think we yeah. always knew, like, at some point, more than engineers, just, like, working together at some point, like, working on a company. Well, yeah, it was always. I think it was, like, just always that line of sight. You guys are close in age. Yeah. Yeah, it's only a year apart. So. We were doing things, you know, slowly, slowly. We, I would say the biggest, I guess, differentiator was that we would always end up doing something different. Like first we were, you know, helping distract the drivers or it would be dentists or it could be something else, but we were always onto a different industry, a different sector. I, I, I looked a little bit, not the uh, stock, <laughs> like I looked you guys' profiles up and, and I saw that you guys won a lot of awards for different like projects. Yeah, that's more mainly like when you enter into competitions and stuff like that. Yeah. For either business or tech, uh, those those were what they were. So, cool. yeah. So um, obviously, you guys have your company, Kalinda. Yeah. Can you explain a little bit of what Kalinda does? Yeah. Um, so basically, we vet mass tour claimants in minutes. Um, so, you know, right now, you know, obviously, a big problem that has existed for a while in um, the mass tour industry is just the record review process that happens. Um, prior to a a settlement, obviously. Um, And just being able to go through, one, qualify all the claimants, and then two, deeply, you know, categorize and identify the criteria that are, you know, associated with a specific claimant. And so that process for an entire docket for a firm can take, you know, a couple of months sometimes, but we're able to do that process in just five hours with AI. And do you guys have, so how does it work? Like, is is there access to databases that you guys have? able to yeah so right now it's all just like medical records or frankly any type of records that the attorneys are uploading for their case so they can be 
pharmacy records, employment records, maybe like photos, videos, medical records, whatever it is, they get the records from whatever the third party and then they can upload it into our system where we vet vetted out based on their core criteria for whatever you know, lawsuit they're looking for. Got it, got it. What is the technology? So we, have, we use a combination of models uh, and we have sort of, we built an engine over you know, the last year to, to sort of one, uh, categorize, extract, and then aggregate all the information um, and sort of a useful manner. So it's both a combination of open models and also our own models that are able to deeply search uh, the records and find the information that the attorneys need. Yeah. I feel like that's a huge issue with Bass Torres. Yeah. It's, I mean, you see it with a lot of the older litigations as well. But for example, in Camp Lugio, when you have all those government documents that are physical and were uploaded and, and, and have it been a scan, you need a technology that can go in and maybe recognize all the handwriting. Exactly. Pull the bridge from it. Um, interestingly enough, my, my university where I went to school, UB, yeah. was where handwriting recognition was first vented. Oh, no way. It, really? was, it was a super weird thing. I, I found out during this podcast talking to someone. Oh, God. They mentioned it. Um, but that's sort of like the yeah. bones of what you guys do at Blended. Yeah, it's both, you know, recognition. I think in the, if you look at sort of the older version of this technology, you might, you might see things like OCR and sort of that. And it's, it's, it's much, much beyond that. It's, you know, both contextual, it's um, being able to find out and yeah, kind of look at information in a way he would, and sort of, you know, if it's like a product ID, it's going to be twisted, flipped and scratched and, you know, dis disoriented on a random piece of paper that no one could do read. And so it's sort of that kind of, uh, okay. Yeah, I guess I have to get you. Hey, hey. Um, I'm interested to know, yeah. cause we've been in San Francisco now for sure. days. Yeah. Love the city. It's a lot colder than <laughs> it is. Yeah. It's kind of cold. Yeah, it, it is. It is. Yeah. A lot colder. A little too cold. It's, it's too, it's fog. Cold. It's not yeah. a good, like yeah. Buffalo this time of year is like high seventies consistently, yeah. like eighties and sometimes yeah. nineties. We were there there in the hottest day. It was so, doing yeah. 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 It was, it, and it was sold off. But, I, I, I like the New York Verdict jacket. No. Um, and so, but it's, it's nice. It's a beautiful city. Um, the one thing I wanted to ask you is what made you move from Seattle to, to San Francisco? Yeah. I don't care. I, I would say, honestly, it's like the, I'd say it's like the community and the people here. I think uh, this is almost like a very like singularity moment with AI, right? I was actually just talking to like an attorney at the conference where they talked about when they were in college and they saw like, a mouse move and they could, you could see it move between the computer. And that was like a mind blowing thing. And now you have things like chat GPT, you have AI, and it's almost like a similar moment. And because we have this like singularity, there's a lot of people in San Francisco, a lot of people in Silicon Valley, the Bay area who are working on AI and using the applications of it. And so I think because of that, you have just a bunch of people who are like-minded working on how do we just improve this technology and it's changing so quick. I mean, there's new and better models every single weekend, week out. Um, and so for us, it was like, it's almost like a little bit of FOMO, right? You're sitting in Seattle or like on a different side of the country and it's like, am I missing out on something? And so it's like, I want to just go build where everything is happening, yeah. right? I think of it kind of like the gold rush. It's like the gold is in San Francisco. You just got to come here yeah, and see yeah. it yourself. If I had to also sum it up, I think if there's any place to move fast, I guess break nothing and also uh, be able to keep up with all the technology that's happening. I mean, it's like, it's very granular, right? You might find new things every day to help you stand out or have a different share of your own company. And so it's, it's and that's, those are my folks, but yeah. The, the funny thing is when I flew into San Francisco, every billboard I passed. Oh yeah. AI. AI. Yeah, every single one's AI. A little too much. Or a startup. Yeah. And then you look to the left and there's a freaking Wayne bone yeah. driving no <laughs> Yeah, It's like driving itself. Yeah. Only in San Francisco. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Wayne was only in San Francisco. But, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. You haven't been on. Right? I haven't been on one of the others. Left to go this year. after this. <laughs> um, so yeah, I feel like that's very smart of you guys to to hone in on San Francisco. Um, and now with everything, you're plugged into the world, rest of the country. So yeah. with a simple Zoom, you guys can meet anybody. But the tech is being built here. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Are you in there? Yeah. So one thing I wanted to talk about is Rule sixteen point one. I feel like in the mass tour yeah. space, especially, it's not everybody's mind, right? What does Rule 16.1 mean to your company and why it's so valuable? Yeah, so basically Rule 16.1 is going to mandate early vetting. Um, and that's primarily because it's a long-standing problem uh, that's 
that's been in the mass world space. Um, you know, you can think for, you know, Camp Lejeune, for example, how many, you know, invalid, if you want to call it fraudulent claims that there were. Um, now that you can see that in Depo Provera, in fact, in Depo Provera, um, they didn't, they sort of, I guess, the judge didn't early mandate, meaning that, you know, you sort of have to early vet um, all those claimants. So for us, what that really means is that because all the firms will be trying to do that, um, I think that that rule is in place far before the technology can catch up. I think it's it's also well, if if the technology is there, there will be a lot of delays because firms will might might uh, you know request for an extension of time to review those claims to vet those claims. And it's the good thing is that really vetting is sort of like a really preliminary check. It doesn't have to go that deep into it. Um, and what we do as a company is to go deep into it. That's like the big thing. But I think being able to do that very efficiently is going to be pretty important. So when that time comes in December and all the deals moving forward have to have, uh, you know, early vetting, then that's going to be a huge stepping stone. So that's me. So, so the issue right now, if I understand in mass courts is in judges, especially judging in like that whole effort. Yeah. Obvious, they want to create these timelines to make sure that the cases that move forward are all legit. Right, right. Yeah. So just mass towards just mm-hmm. illegitimate claims that were yeah, spawned by some either fraud or just some, some other issue. Yeah. And now it's on the law for it to push the timeline a bit back. Yeah. They don't have the capacity to do that. Right. So they need to build with a company like Klingon, right, who has the technology on hand because these law firms can't do it in yeah. house, right? Oh, yeah. They need that technology that you guys bring mm-hmm. to be able to vet those claims early on. Yeah, and that sort of bridges it to my next question is, like, at what stage should companies or law firms coming to you on on what to do this? Yeah, at what stage in, like, a litigation? Before it consolidates? Yeah, definitely before, I would say. It's like, you know, most of these firms, it's it's they're taking in, usually at one point, a lot of claims at once. Um, and so the, it's on a whole spectrum of claims. It's like some that have simple deficiency problems, and the, the defense is obviously going to try to, Throw them out, and, and everyone's complaining about this, like you know, in Haralaxum, for example. Yeah. Um, and then there's like the complete other side, which is like, no, this claim doesn't have any of the criteria. They did not use the product. They did not have those injuries. Um, and so it's it's sort of on the spectrum, where it's from minute details to really large ones. Yeah. Um, and so I would say that bit, I like the the stage at which people should come is when they have you know a lot of claims, and if it's you know very minute details, then yeah, it probably would be a lot. But if it's even deeper, you don't have to have a lot of claims to start, you know, integrating technology in the fur, uh, just because the number of pages and also the complexity. I would say if I had to sum it up, it's the number of hours that you're looking for. Yeah. So, yeah. No, I, I couldn't agree more. And I feel like, you know, we talked a little bit about Camp Lejeune. You Obviously, there's so many more mass for litigations that are on the, on the horizon and already being litigated. Um, do you guys have any that you've worked on? Uh, that's a good example of how powerful your technology can be. Yeah, um, Bard was a, was a really good example. We um, which one? Bard, 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 yeah. Bard, Bard. yeah, yeah. And power, so in PowerPort, big one, and that was our practically our first one. Um, and the reason it, it felt like a real striking point was because of the number of hours it takes to review one claim. It's everything from the product usage to when it was implanted uh, to the IDs to the various ca- types of injuries you can have, anything from blood clots to sepsis to pulmonary yeah. embolism. Um, and then really the, the idea is that you know, in, a, in a standard review, you one can't control F. Right. We like to call what we do control F2.4. Yes, it's bad. But um, it, it becomes very complicated. And so sort of that, that, that reasoning and the aggregation that's involved in that process, it can be a huge time drain. Um, and so... With Bard, it was a very standout example of where we could help. Yeah. So we've done Bard now, you know, now some Depp Rivera, um, you know, neck, stuff like that. Yeah. And there's always gonna be more. Oh, there is, yeah. one thing I'd say that's like kind of interesting, one that we're about to start working on is social media. I think there's like one of the most interesting ones because actually since you guys since it is in San Francisco. Yeah. And and I think those are um, you know, that's one that's dealing with almost like therapy records. Which is kind of interesting because it's it's not it's medical, but still at the same time, it's you know these kids are getting addicted to the algorithms that these companies have developed, which is almost designed to be you know neurologically addictive for people to be you 
know, sticking on their phones and sort of trying to, you know, impress and put it out there to make the algorithm better and better. So the therapy records are, are something that we're slowly starting to get into to look and analyze um, with the first criteria. But I think that and video game addiction, these are the ones that are like coming up that are kind of uh, interesting to work on. Yeah. And, they, and they fall in the lap of you guys, the ethos, you guys. Yeah, background. correct. Yeah. Uh, I would say you just actually touching on ethos. I think uh, our end goal is, you know, as, as cliche it sounds, is to accelerate justice for, uh, you know, the end, end, our end clients, which is really just people. Yep. Um, and so, you know, whether it's the court or the firms, uh, obviously not the defense, but the court or the firms really trying to reduce that timeline to settlement. There's going to be rules. There's going to be technology proposed in place. There's obviously settlement administration, um, you know, things like that to really make sure that the people that deserve that settlement get it when they can. You know, th that money can pay for the kids' college tuition. And so that to us is the most important thing. And so, you know, whether it's, you know, cases like product liability, you know, medical device cases, like medical with medical records or it's social media cases, it's, it, it really falls into that. And, and yeah. You said it best. And yeah. if the timeline on this, getting settlements to these claimants as quickly as possible can be, I mean, life or death in some instances, where you deal with video game addiction or, or social media addiction. You have claimants even that have committed suicide or you yeah. have far power court and you have people who have right. suffered right. deaths from these infections or anything else. It's really important to get those settlements out to them as quickly as possible. Yeah. I think the space is long suffering from outdated timelines because technology was always antiquated. There's very niche areas. So like, right. The players were a little bit complacent. Maybe yeah. How they administered everything and vetted everything. So I think all of this technology is really hitting the forefront and mass towards. I think you guys are at the center again. Um, and I think what you guys do is cool. Thank I think you. the fact that you guys are two brothers doing this. I think it's no, I'm, I, <laughs> I tell everyone this whole time, but we, Really, really, really love what we do. It's uh, actually a blessing to be in this space. Yeah. yeah. Would you advocate for people who to San Francisco? Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, even we've... with the, the, the price? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It gets, there's some good areas. Yeah. Is, yeah. It, actually, we recently actually started, you know, going around to some of the firms here and just, you know, going in person and just, it's good to meet them. Yeah. You have a yeah. line. You know, because they're in San Francisco, they're very much on the opposite end and what they're very forthcoming with technology and, and Oftentimes are remote, and you know they get it. They give us in, you kind of you get the touch. Just in Francisco, it feels like you're in the home. Yeah, the home crowd. So yeah. if you want to become like San Francisco, you just go. <laughs> I mean, I'm loving it so far, yeah. and you guys been great to me. Yeah. Um, before we wrap up, yeah, uh, is there anything you guys want to mention before? No, I mean, uh, thank you, Rocco, for having yeah, us on the podcast. Yeah, yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. I think you guys. Yeah. Thank, thank you to Milestone for that. Milestone. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> it's awesome. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to be a tourist for a couple more days. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. If I see Elgin. We got to yeah, take you on the Waymo before that turns Waymo 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 Before that turns into litigation, too. So. Waymo 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 yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys. Yeah. All right. Thanks so much. Yeah. Thanks, Rocco. Hey, thanks for tuning into the Law AI Money Podcast. If you enjoyed our conversation, be sure to like and subscribe so we can keep the conversation going. Thank you.